I always want to hide those people who are smart than I am. Great, great things in business are never done by one person. They're done by a, they're done by a team of people. Here's the story of how I recruited a world-class team with zero dollars. He was the SVP of business affairs, doing all the licensing for the NBA, the NFL, and most recently, HBO. When I interview somebody, I said, tell me some of the most difficult problems you worked on and how you solved them. But we had to build it through that group of incredibly talented people bumping up against each other, having arguments, having fights sometimes, making some noise, and working together, they polish each other, and they polish the ideas. Here's the story of how I recruited a world-class team with zero dollars. In May of 2021, my startup, Keyring, a bundle of video streaming services, was just about to die. If you have ever worked on something really hard, and it felt like it was just about over, please keep watching. I'm gonna show you exactly how I got these world-class executives to join my startup with just about no money. And I need you to tell me about a time that you've been courageous and what it did for you in the comments below. One of my favorite books is called Drive by Daniel Pink. It mentions and highlights and focuses on two main drivers of people. One, external motivators, things like money, status, stock, and internal motivators, things like passion, love, curiosity. Studies in the book found that not only are you happier when you follow and align yourself with these intrinsic motivators, but you actually perform better. But lucky for us, we had no money, so we had to appeal to our candidates' intrinsic motivators. But the first step was building a funnel of qualified candidates. I've learned personally when recruiting, it's best to fill that funnel with hundreds of people who could fit that role. And when you talk to them, it gives you enough context to decide who is the best fit beyond the job description that you pitch out to people. For us specifically at Keyring, I was the young crazy founder, so I knew that the streaming or media world wanted people with a track record some gray hairs, some people with 20 years of experience. And at the time, I knew that this meant adult supervision. This signaled veteran experience in the industry of video streaming and media that I just didn't have because I was just too young to have that track record. So on LinkedIn, I searched for senior titles of people who can complement my skill set with the background or the veteran expertise that I simply was too young to have. The simple formula here is a title like SVP, EVP, President, or Chief of X times the company background that you would like to align with your company. So it was those titles times the 13 or 12 top streaming services in the US for us. We needed to hire two roles. One role as a CTO on the technical side of the business and one role as a CBO or Chief Business Officer on the licensing part of the business so we can become a legit video streaming service package. Step one. So on LinkedIn, I parsed by the top companies in my space that were related to media. So Netflix, Hulu, Showtime, etc. On the people search, I looked for the people who were at these companies. Step two was I parsed by the top or more senior people in these positions. So SVP, EVP, VP, President, these kind of titles. Those two searches combined gave me a list of a couple thousand people I could search from or reach out to, to fill the role at our company. After thousands of messages and hundreds of follow-ups, we came down to about 20 to 40 people who were interested in interviewing for those roles, the CTO and the CBO. The next step was to close one of these candidates, and this is where you go full energy, full Disney, full passion, because going back to those extrinsic and intrinsic motivators, this kind of energy brings people to a place of irrationality in the brains. Maybe the numbers aren't good enough. Maybe you're not experienced enough as a founder. Maybe you didn't raise enough money. All that goes out the window when someone's right in front of you and they're telling you the vision or the, the, the mission of what they're about to do when it's just them. My next step was to close one of them for each role. I needed to tell the story with energy and conviction. Before each interview ended, I told them we had three or four candidates also interviewing for the position just to build some FOMO. But what I didn't tell them is that <laughs> those three or four candidates have already declined to go further in the process and work for our company. It came down to the last guy and everything was on the line. 
the company wasn't going so well. Um, investors wanted to see people with more experience in the team because I didn't have a background in traditional media, needed to take the venture forward, which I understand. And this was my last shot. The ones who have already declined, they declined it in a nice way, but it, it felt like, you know, thanks kid, but this will never work. And that really pissed me off. The last candidate, I went full Disney mode. I pitched my heart out and told them why this would work in the market for consumers and why this would work in the market for streaming services. And after some reluctance, he, he kind of pulled back. He, he was saying, you know, I don't know because of this reason. I don't know because they're hard to work with. And that's when I kind of doubled down on the conviction and the passion. And it was almost like magic. You could see, I could see him on the Zoom call. The, the, the orientation of his face changed, little subtle movements in his face. Like he was starting to get it. Like I was communicating to him without actually saying it, that I was gonna make this work and that he should come with me. That fieriness actually came at the right time with the best candidate. He was the SVP of business affairs, doing all the licensing for the NBA, the NFL, and most recently, HBO. Again, we had no money. I made him the best offer I could, which was an equity heavy offer. And I said, look, when we raise our first round of financing, it'll be worth anywhere from 15 to $20 million. However, we haven't got there yet. We need to get a few licenses before we are able to, to raise and justify at that valuation. I gave him 8% of the company, and I think that was a fair exposure if we got these streaming services on board and got the licenses we needed to become a legitimate service. He accepted, and we were off to the races. So as a founder, as you've probably realized, you have to put on a mask sometimes. You have to act like it's all okay when it's not okay. You have to act like it'll work out when you can't really be sure it'll work out. No one can ever be that sure. So after interviewing this candidate, I said, I took off the mask and I said, why are you working for me? You made 850 last year at HBO. And to be honest, I'm, I, I didn't tell you, but all the other candidates rejected us. So, you know, thank you for being here. <laughs> and after we had a good laugh because, you know, who says that during the interview process, I had to tell him the truth afterwards. He said, look, I love the energy. And the story that you told yourself, that you told me, is one I think that I buy, that you buy, and I think we can get the streaming services to buy as well. And I was like, all right, we're in, we're okay, okay, we're here now. I'm like, and, and, and for every day we started working together, I was just grateful he was there, and it was up to me to say, I can't, I have to make sure this is worthwhile for this guy and his time. And you can't take that lightly. So here's what I learned. If you ever want to go full Disney, go full passionate, the best time to do it is when you're storytelling. For press, for investors, for people who are too good for your company that you're trying to recruit, it's the best time to get passionate. And you don't do that over email or you don't do that in any text format. It's on the phone or it's face to face. And that's when people really feel the excitement and the conviction that you have for the venture. It's this storytelling when people go from rational to irrational. Because what I found in startups is that the numbers are never good enough. If you tell an investor you have a million bucks in revenue a year, he'll be like, oh, that's great. Come back when you have two million. Or if you tell a candidate, we have uh, this, many, this many customers and after X amount of months, we will get Y amount of customers. Anchoring people on those numbers in, the, in their brain, uh, it, the numbers exist in a vacuum and it doesn't give pe the people the context they need to understand why those numbers are important. So this storytelling comes to people and takes their brain from rational to irrational and gets them to, to, to really think about those intrinsic motivators as to why they're in this meeting, why they're talking to you, and why they should go forward with you, whether it be the press, investors, or recruits. The irrational and perhaps universal mind takes people from these numbers are good to this guy can take on his country and I wanna go with this guy. A similar experience happened with the CTO who was the ex-head of data at Hulu. Less theatrical, less dramatic, but the same thing applies. When you pitch with passion and conviction, it takes people from does this make sense to this, this makes sense to me and what I align with intrinsically. And that is how I got world-class streaming executives to join my startup. 
You can do it too, and if you need help, please do not hesitate to ask questions in the comments. I am all ears, and I, there's only like 12 subscribers right now, so I will help every single one of you. Thanks. <laughs>